The moon blinked, the stars followed, and the mare found herself lost in the dark among the soft dunes of the desert where she'd been exploring. The pitch darkness surrounded her, holding her breath. She had never gone out this far before. She lit her horn with a light spell and stared back by its light. On the crest of the dune, some thousand steps away from her horn, illuminated a large drop of darkness on the sand. As if the moon had wept before extinguishing, she approached, half sliding down the dune, and stood at the edge of it. She knelt and peered into the dark. It was a pit, punctuated deep into the desert's heart. Hum, did you dream? Sweet dream, asked her friend, who lived and slept in the out-of-the-way alley, where the counterlock guards couldn't find her. Dreams are like mice, and they scurry when the sun rises. Crowfeather said from her perch as she uh, looked around. She took hungry bites of Sweet Dream's spare bedroll. You keep yours in a journal? Yes, it's very helpful in remembering dreams. It's with me if you'd like to examine it. Sweet Dreams levitated the journal out of her saddlebags. This one carries my dreams from this year to last. Any of me? Crowfeathers grinned with a slash of white from the shadows. Perhaps, Sweet Dream said with a smile of her own. She flipped to a recent page and levitated the journal in front of Crow Feathers, so she could read. The moon? Crow Feathers asked for a moment. You dreamt of the moon? Yes. At the far reaches of my dreams, where I've explored, there's a moon. That's unlike ours. Look! Sweet Dream pointed a hoof at some sketches of the moon on the page. It is blank. There's no mare. No mare in the moon. Crowfeather squinted at the sketches. None of the moons Sweet Dreams had sketched depicted the shadowy figure of a pony that marred the face of the moon. Sweet Dreams nodded. Crowfeather shrugged. So what does it mean? Too much spice in your supper, or... Crowfeathers lowered her voice and hid behind her wing. Could it be the mare in the moon is after you? I would not expect her to be. Unlike you, I'm a well-behaved filly. Sweet Dream nickered. She spirited her journal away back into her saddlebags. When Sweet Dreams looked back at Crowfeather, she caught her staring off into the sky. Crowfeather? Look at this. The Pegasus leaped into the air and pointed a hoof at somewhere in the sky. Sweet Dreams moved a bit and saw a distant spire of Canterlock Castle, where she pointed above all the buildings. There's this balcony up there. At night, the moon is so close you can almost touch it. How would you know? There are towers that are forbidden without escorts. Very, though I stop there to rest all the time. The guards never catch me. For that, at least, I can fly us there. In the night? Nightmare night. Crowfeather's wild grin grew wider. It's only some days away now. On what better night? Sweet Dream chased her dream through the alley, galloping over litter and garbage that spilled like the rest of the vermin. Around her, she could sense the fake dreams of other ponies, her father's dreams, her sisters, her neighbors. If she went far enough, she could sense all of Canterlot's dreams as the city slept, though she did her best not to pry. There was one pony who escaped her, however, one whose dreams she would be interested in, one who slept at odd hours. She turned a corner into the dead end, and froze at the sight of the thing in the alley floor. Though, through a knothole in the wooden fence, a stream of sunlight burned with a harsh white circle into the dirt. The dreams of their ponies became quiet, and a terrible loneliness settled into Sweet Dream. The drone of the dreams had been a constant wait. Now it was as if she was alone, sleeping in all of Canterlot. She reached out for some pony, any pony who still could be dreaming. She felt the sand against her cheeks before she opened her eyes. When she did, she saw the soft dunes of the desert where she'd been exploring, and the soft black pit of the sand. The moon, mareless, was out, but the stars were not. The desert shined in the glow of it. Reality blurred in Sweet Dream's mind. The words were scrawled into the sand beside the pit, as if by a hoof. Here dreams the mother of darkness. Nightmare night. 
by the time the two mares set off for the tower. Sweet dreams latched on to Crowfeather's neck. The moon was already well on its track across the equestrian sky. It appeared to come closer with every labored layup of star Crowfeather's wings. Sweet dream held tight as Crowfeather's struggled to draw them to the castle spire. Thankfully, the flight didn't last. Sweet Dreams hopped off Crowfeather's back as they landed on the spacious balcony. A viewing platform, perhaps, decorated in the castle's usual sculptures. The view over Canterlot was magnificent, true enough. Sweet Dreams set out a blanket and the food from her saddlebags, while Crowfeather's rested. Naturally, beneath the moon, the conversation soon shifted back to Sweet Dreams' dreams. You? Sweet Dream asked Crowfeather after a while. You allow me to speak to what interests me? Dreams and the like. But you never discuss what you fancy. Hearing you tell your dreams is enough. To have passion. It must be nice. There's nothing that sings for me such like that. Your cutie mark? No feather. I earned it when I fled home. Living on my own without roots is well and all. I could not live by any other way. Crowfeather sighed. Though, you make waking up seem so exciting. Your dreams expire you? Me? There's little for me to wake up for. Sweet Dream went back and sat beside her friend. You have me. The two mares sat there in silence and watched the moon crawl across the sky. Sweet Dream. Crowfeather spoke up. Sweet Dream could feel the other mare grow warmer against her neck. What is it? Is this... odd? Crowfeather's voice was calm. No, of course not. You're my best friend, Crowfeather. Crowfeather mumbled something and nuzzled against Sweet Dream's neck. Sweet Dream had never seen Crowfeather like this before. It almost reminded her of herself. Sweet Dream looked up at the moon. It had grown closer. Larger. She could make out even the creases of its craters. The shadow that was the mare in the moon watched her. It does seem as if you can touch it, Sweet Dream whispered. Crowfeather lifted her head. Why not try it? She whispered back. Sweet Dream could feel the other mare's hot breath against her ear. A white eye, closing and the stars snuffing out one by one. The scene from her dream flashed through her mind. Sweet Dream followed Crowfeathers to the railing. The two of them stood together before the moon. Soon, she observed the exact moment. The pagri, when the moon was closest. The moon appeared to slide to a halt, as if it clicked into place among the stars. Crowfeathers whooped and thrust her hoof out to the moon. Sweet Dream raised hers halfway. A gale blew over the mares, whipping their manes behind them as Crowfeathers whooped again. Come on, Sweet Dream! Sweet Dream shut her eyes and breathed in the night air. She smiled wide. She had waited for this moment, to do something daring, something free, with a friend at her side. A white eye, closing, and another, green and slid like a cat's opening. She laughed and threw her hoof to the moon, stretching it as if she were trying to pick it like an apple out of the sky. In an instant, the world faded away, like smoke replaced by the soft dunes in her dream. Sweet Dream stood again at the edge of the desert pit, alone. The mareless moon shone and stared down at her, as if it alone could judge her, and she could hear the beating of heavy wings somewhere in the musty darkness beneath. Sweet Dream knelt and shouted into the pit, a primal shout, and something shouted back. Sweet Dream reared away. A distant part of her still had her hoof raised, she could feel it brushing against the surface that was strange to her. Foreign. Carefully, she traced her hoof through its valleys. She could feel the cragginess of the ridges and the craters, and the softness of the dust that was like ash. Sweet Dream! A voice yelled, as if some pony shook her. Sweet Dream pulled her hoof away as if she had touched fire. The moon dominated the sky before her, enormous and all-encompassing. The white eye. Her knees buckled. Something pulled hard at her mane, pulling her away from the railing and down to the cold stone floor. The Mother of Darkness. The words repeated themselves in Sweet Dream's mind as she huddled in bed. 
A tremendous fear gripped her. She knew she was out there. The sole white eye in her visage, rolling languidly in search of her. Every street, every alley, every dream. For what is Equestria but another dream? One of a mad beast. One which had smelled her. The flame of the bedroom lamp flickered. Sweet dream looked upon the soft dunes of the nameless desert. Ghosts lit by a mirrorless moon. The pit loomed in front of her. She stood at its edge, but there was no strength left in her, and no point to pull her away this time. Her legs gave, and she trembled. The darkness rushed past her, in a timeless eternity until the entrance of the pit faded to a pinpoint of light, against thousands of clusters of stars in the sky. Even the stars fled from her, leaving her alone in the cold dark. Only then could she sense it, something immense, circling her, beating down with wings so large that they must have been enough to blacken the sky. The mare in the moon laughed as she lunged for sweet dream, her voice thunderous in her ears. How dare you wander the desert where my shadow falls, little mare! Will you live now, as I have for the past five hundred years?